celebrating the appearance day of Sri Ramachandra. And if you can hear me, raise your hand. If you can hear me, say shh. Today is the celebration of Ram Navami, which means it's a big day. Because on these special days when Krishna has appeared, it gives us an opportunity to remember that we're in a universe on a tiny little planet floating in the sky. How do we remember that? Well, I can say just on the way here today, I read to the devotees. That's interesting. I don't know where it came from. It's not from that. I didn't touch it yet. It came from something else. If you have a, like a wet towel or something. I read about how Ramchandra, in his Leela, Leela means that it's not like the birth of an ordinary person in this world. Krishna describes that in the Bhagavad Gita, that the soul, who's part and parcel of Krishna, is forced by the power of a material nature. Material nature is divine, in that Krishna says in the Gita, Daivihi Esha Gunamayi, Mama Maya Duratyaya. And for us tiny souls who are the same quality of Krishna, but quantitatively we're very tiny, and we can be overcome very easily by the material nature because it's Krishna's nature, and even though it's inferior to us, it's still divine nature, and it has a, it puts, puts us under a spell and it's very difficult to work with unless we surrender to Krishna. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, finishing the verse I just quoted, Daivahiesha gunamayi, mama maya duratyaya, mame veye prapadyante, maya me etam tarantite. Looks indelible. Well, if I had some spray or something, I could do a commercial product pr placement. It's a great mystery. No, it's all right. I think I'm pretty good. It worked somewhat. Thank you. Uh, Krishna says, Daivihi Esha Gunamayi, Mama Maya Duratyaya. Mama means mine, Maya, this material nature, which is also called Maya. It's illusory energy. It, like a mirage, appears like water, it appears to be water, but when we approach it, the water is not there. So the substance is missing for us here in this world because we're, we're conscious, matter is not conscious. And daivahi esha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya. Duratya means it's very difficult to overcome. And this plays into the Ramayana also because it's a story about those who have the opposite mentality of devotees. A devotee realizes that this nature comes from Krishna, everything emanates from him, and heeds his suggestion in the Bhagavad Gita, which is to take shelter. Krishna himself says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas tu mam parta daivim prakritim ashrita, that a, a great soul is someone who takes shelter of Krishna, and that's a daiv prakriti, which means the spiritual energy of Krishna, not the material energy. Mam eva ye prapadyante mayametam tarantite. We used that the, this energy is very difficult to overcome except for those who surrender to me. Then they can easily cross beyond it. So, as we are reading in the Srimad Bhagavatam on the way here, in the third chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami gives a list of the various avatars. It was a question that was asked of Sutta Goswami at Naimasharanya Forest. Uh, who are the avatars? Can you describe them? What, why did they come and what were they like? And he answers that pretty quickly because that question is asked in the first chapter and here it is the third chapter. And at the very end of the second chapter in the Bhagavatam, Sutta says, Bhava yat yesha sattvena lokan vai loka bhavana li lava taranu rato deva tirayandaradishu. Yes, uh, the Lord comes in various forms uh, to deliver the world. 
And then he starts to name the various incarnations uh, that appear. Uh, Krishna is not on that list. Why do you suppose that is? Yes, it's because he's the source of all the avatars. There's the avatars and the avatari, which means the source of all the avatars. And so uh, this is one of the themes, the main themes of the Bhagavatam or, or a focus point. Ete cham shakalapum sa krishna stu bhakavan svayam indrari vyakulam lokan mridayantu yuge yuge that uh, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, and he's the source of all the other forms of God. This is mentioned also in the Brahma Samhita, departure, eva hita shantanam abhyupetya, dipayate vrivita heta samana dharma, yas tadra geva hita vishnu chaya vipati, govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami. Brahma says, there is an original, and all the others emanate from, then he gives the example of, one candle lights many other candles. They have the same quality of light, but there, there is an original. So Krishna is the original, and then there are various avatars that come from Krishna and manifest in this world. Ramachandra is listed as one. One of the f famous leelas of Lord Ramachandra is that he had facilitated the building of a bridge. Now, of course, he could have easily, since he's everywhere anyway, manifested himself in Lanka and destroyed the demon Ravana. But in Leela, he likes to exhibit various amazing potencies that he has. And one of the potencies was manifested when he went to the ocean, the Indian Ocean, and first propitiated the, the deity of the ocean. Someone may say, well, that sounds archaic. But actually, it's true that there is uh, a personality behind all the forces in, the, in nature. And how could we even understand that or accommodate that? Well, uh, if you've ever received a, a bill for your electricity, you have an inkling that there's somebody behind the electrical current that's coming into your house, right? We've been really aware lately because our bill's been high and we can't figure out why since we're out of town most of the time anyway. But in any case, there's somebody behind, behind all that and the Bhagavatam explains how behind all the different forces of nature and the phenomena, the individual categories of phenomena within this material world like the ocean, there are deities who preside over it. So interestingly, Ramchandra, although... Even in his Leela, he's the to-be, of course, we don't know at this point, prince, because he's been exiled. But uh, uh, still, he's from the kingly order, but he still asked permission across the ocean. And the ocean was a little late in coming to him. And then Ramchandra showed some of his power by starting to heat up the ocean just by glancing at it. And then the the deity of the ocean came and said, sorry, please tell me how I can serve. And Ramchandra then, uh, along with his minions, helped to build the, uh, the bridge across Lanka. So just as a, a point of reference, as we were driving along the 101 freeway, we generally focused on driving, which is a good thing. And we were thinking also at the same time that you know, we, are on, we are on a little rock, Compared to most other planets, it's just a little pebble. This Earth planet is so small. But it's floating. And it's floating so perfectly that you can set your watch by it. You know, uh, I mean, I asked this morning, I asked Siri last night, actually, when the sunrise was going to be. And she said, he said, I have a, a he, Siri. And he said, uh, <laughs> it's actually Indian. He said, uh, <laughs> He said, uh, it's at 6.17, I think, or maybe at 6.13. 6.32? That's good. So the, you can, you can uh, look at the universe and see the order of it. That's why there are, there are ologies. There'd be nothing to study if everything was random. There'd be no biology. There'd be no, I don't know, what are the hard sciences? Go to the second. Zoology is pretty hard science. <laughs> yeah. 
chemistry, blah, 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 you know, ologies. Uh, everyone's going to say sociology and stuff like that, which is definitely important. Uh, and there are ways in which you can look at the universe and understand the categories. It's because there's an intelligence behind it. So just to remember the fact that our lives, although they may seem out of control, have you ever felt like your life feels out of control? Please say yes. Uh, it doesn't mean the universe is out of control. It just means our place in it seems a little chaotic, but everything's working perfectly. That's the verse. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishate, which means everything's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's the uh, short translation. Everything's Purnam. It comes from a perfect source, and it's all the manifestations are perfectly lined up. So uh, we have this ornate seat, and it's so nicely decorated today. How could you miss that when you walk in? The, uh, the devotees who take their uh, time to decorate make life better for all of us. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Seated here is the representative of our uh, Guru Parampara. Uh, for he is the founder and Acharya of ISKCON. So you'll find a list of Acharyas. It's not an exhaustive list, it's a representative list of the great souls, just like in science. You don't name every scientist who ever taught at MIT, Harvard, or any of the ancient universities. You name the main ones that uh, are the big names. Can you think of a few? Einstein, Newton, thank you. Louis Pasteur, who once said, great discoveries come only unto the prepared mind. So there, there are these different luminaries and so forth. They're listed, and similarly, they're great acharyas who generally uh, noticeably do more than most others in, in establishing Krishna consciousness and the doctrine of Krishna consciousness in the world clarifying it for everyone. So his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, is on that seat of esteem called the Vyasasana, the, the seat of Vyasadev. And Vyasadev is actually one of the incarnations mentioned in the Bhagavatam. One of the avatars, he comes as a teacher. In fact, Vyasa means editor. He, the Vedas are already there, but he edits them. Edits them in the sense that he divides them and makes them more available to people all over the world. And then he also gives the itihasas. We have Mahabharata, Ramayan, and ancient histories that teach like stories. As in this age, people are more inclined towards uh, stories than they are very terse philosophy, philosophical points like in the Vedanta Sutra. So uh, on, these, on these days, we can remember how Krishna very deliberately comes to this world and gives an opportunity for everyone to remember that there is a source to everything. And our source is very beautiful. Not only that, charming. Mm. Bhagavatam says, Yet pada pankacha palasa vilasya bhakta. Vilas means playful. The supreme absolute, absolute truth is not impersonal. Otherwise, we'd have no cause for being attracted. Nobody loves the sky. You might appreciate a sunny day because you can see clearly, but you don't fall in love with the sky because there's no qualities or not enough qualities there for, for us to really appreciate. But we can fall in love with a person who has qualities. And what is the proof that God is a person? All of you, all of us, that's the proof. Whatever emanates from the original source also has to have the same qualities. Or it can't be more than, we can't be more than the original source, means the original source is impersonal and then all of a sudden, here we are. <laughs> so, uh, the Ramayan is one of the great stories of the appearance of the Lord in this world. And there are many lessons to take away. 
And I'll go into that in just a minute, but we have, we have to chant, right? Yes. Say yes. yes. Yeah, you got to chant. It's one thing you got to do is chant. So what we're going to chant, though, is, is uh, relevant to the day today, which is the appearance of Sri Ramachandra, Ram Navami, being celebrated all over the world gloriously. And we're going to sing a song written by Jayadev Goswami. And which song do you think it's going to be by Jayadev Goswami? There's only one in our songbook, I think. Yeah. Why should we sing that one today? The Dash Avatar Stotra means. It's a list of the ten most prominent incarnations of Krishna, or the avatars who have appear in the world. And one of them happens to be... And who, who do we generally mention along with Ramchandra? Sita, come on, work with me now. You all know. In India, when the Ramayana comes on television, the whole country shuts down. <laughs> you know, Sita, Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman. Yeah. So let's sing the song, and we'll sing it in unison. It's a very joyful, beautiful song. And it lists all the avatars of the Lord. Even the slides in this one is, are fantastic. Aren't they nice? So we'll sing along together, okay? Pralaya payodhi jale dritavanasi vedam Vihita bahit raksharita makeda Shaveda Jaya Jagadishahare Jaya Jagadishahare Here we go. Vitarasi 
Respectful obeisances to my spiritual masters, Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to all the previous acharyas who have painstakingly passed down the knowledge of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, so that it is available to all of us here in Silicon Valley and beyond. And finally, I offer my respects to all. All of you present here today. Vanchakalpa Tubrishha Kripasanabe Evacha Patitanam Pavanibyo 
Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha. So the stories of the Lord are not only entertaining, but they're also instructive. Of course, we know from Srimad Bhagavatam that by hearing about Krishna, because Krishna and his pastimes are the same, Nam, Gun, Rup, Lila means the name of Krishna, and Krishna are the same, and the form of Krishna, as we see here in the temple, we come see the form of Krishna. Sometimes people say, well, God's everywhere. Why do you have to go to the temple? And we say, well, if God's everywhere, why not go to the temple? He's there also, right? But he's very, he does have a specific form, as is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedanti tat tatvaviras tatvam yaj jnanamadvayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavaniti shabdhyate. Just like when you see a mountain from a distance, it looks like a cloud. In fact, it's hard to tell if it's a cloud or a land mass at first. And then when you get really close, then you can see the form. The other day, other week, I should say, we saw the Himalayas as we were flying from Calcutta to, to Delhi. And as we flew, I, I did a double, triple take because I just usually don't sit on the right side of the plane. We sit on the left, and somehow we ended up on the right side. And it was perfect for viewing the Himalaya mountains. And normally you can't see them because there's so much either clouds, smoke, or smog in general. But there was a clear view of them. But at first, I thought they're so massive and so great, there it must be clouds and then I could see their actual form. Now if I were to get closer at the Himalayas then I'd see that there are trees and people and there's life going on there. And then in a, in a similar way Sudha Goswami describes in the Srimad Bhagavatam how it depends on our angle of vision when we're looking towards Krishna. There's the Brahman aspect which we see from a distance when we're not very much acquainted with Krishna and the ways of approaching Krishna through the, the Shastra or through the Bhagavad Gita, even where Krishna says, to know me personally, the path is bhakti because it's the path of devotion. And when we are viewing from a far away perspective, then we see God as something, just energy. In Japan, we just came back from Japan last night and there's Shintoism, which is a respect for nature, thinking of uh, everything as divine and all the energies. And there's not a really clear idea about who God is. In fact, uh, even in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about the ways in which different kinds of people approach him. He's available to everyone equally. And then it depends on the person who's approaching what their mood is or what their mentality. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives this uh, gradation of different people. Chatur vida bhajante mam jana sukritino arjuna arto jigna sa artarti jnani cha bharatarshabha. He says, four kinds of people approach me. Of course, even backing up one more, he talks about how there are four kinds of people who are impious. They don't believe in God for various reasons. And he lists them. And then he lists four kinds of pious people who do approach uh, Krishna. Some out of a sense of they need, they need something like money. Others have a sense of they want knowledge. And others are suffering. So they're asking God, please help me, I'm suffering. And then there are others who are purely, just their only motivation is out of love of God. So Krishna says, Tesham jnani nitya yukta eka bhakti vishishite priyohi jnani no tyarta maham sacha mama priya. Out of all those, the one that's in knowledge of me is the most dear to me. But he says, Udarak sarava evaiti jnani twat maim avem tam asita sahyukta ma maam evam utamam gatim. All of them are udara. They're all uh, very um, udara. It means the magnanimous. They're all great souls because they're approaching me. Even if they have some desire, they're approaching me. And then later in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says in the ninth chapter, Jnana yajnena chapyanye yajanto mam upasate ekatvena pritaktvena bahuta vishuto mukham. There are some that worship themselves as God. They think everything's God and 
a, a person who's practic who's chanting and so forth, they're chanting because we're God already, and we just forgot. So they worship themselves. I don't know how they'd arrange like a puja with incense and stuff. <laughs> And then there are others, he says, who see God as divided into many. Pritakvina means that uh, they see there are all these devas. Uh, like, let's name a few devas. Ganesh, Indra, Surya, Chandra, Durga. And then they'll, and generally there's five devas that those who believe that God is manifested in these various forms, and he is, but you have to understand the science according to Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita properly uh, before you can approach them with the right mood. But they see, okay, in the aggregate, these together are God, but they're divided into different powerful entities, and then they worship them. And then he said, and some, Pratakvina, uh, in, in the universe, they see God as the universe. That's Shintoism, basically. But uh, it's really hard just to worship something impersonal. Krishna says that in the 12th chapter, right? No, yeah, 12th chapter. Uh, and uh, Arjuna plainly asks Krishna for, all, for everyone's benefit, which is better, the impersonal aspect or the <laughs> personal aspect? And Krishna says, Klesho dikartarastesam avyakta sakta chetasam. Avyaktahi katir do come. Deha vadbir avapyate. That uh, he said it's very, very difficult for a person to worship something impersonal. He said eventually, over a long period of time, if you're detached from the material world, you try to do good for others and so forth, you gradually, gradually can come to that point of understanding God as a person, but it's troublesome. Klesho to try to worship the impersonality of God. So in some Shinto temples, they're very beautiful. J Japanese culture, a lot of it comes from, uh, well, I'd have to, to give a very accurate statement and study my history a little bit more, but there are Vedic sacrifices performed there regularly in these temples. And uh, I sent some pictures the other day because we were in Tsukuba and I went to see, we went to see the Daibutsu, it's a gigantic, a deity of Buddha. And on the way there, there's a place where you can say Achman. They have a little pool, you know, with some stream water coming in, and they have long uh, bamboo sticks with bamboo cups on the end, and before people go there, you know, they take a little Achman. And then there's a bell you can ring. It's about 20 times bigger than our bell. It's got a big log that you ring, bong. <laughs> of course, the Buddha's huge. Uh, and so forth. They offer incense, everything like that. Now, there are all kinds of jinjas, and, uh, which is a Shinto temple. So we, they're often in idyllic places, like little forest, bamboo forests. And you walk up there, and they're made wabi-sabi, made out of you know, wood without any hammering nails or, or joints made. It's very, uh, the artistry is beautiful. The, the aesthetic is, is very... Um, uh, it gives a lot of grounding, you know, to the earth, these uh, Shinto temples. And then you go there and you look for the deity and guess what's there? A mirror. <laughs> and you look at, oh, there I am. You're like, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there are a lot of ideas Krishna's giving in the Bhagavad Gita. The, the people approach me for this idea, that. There's, and then there are people who are completely out of it who... Uh, Krishna mentions, as I said, that they have a, a really demented a mentality about God. And they just say, well, there is no God. And they have all kinds of um, illogical reasons for saying that. For instance, atheism is completely Ill illogical right out of the gate. Because if you claim to be an atheist, then that means you're God. Because you, you can't know that there's no God unless you're God. So to be an atheist and say there is no God doesn't make any sense from the first sentence. And it's more honest to be an ag agnostic, which means I don't know. The word Gnostic comes from Gyan, which means that Agyana means I, I don't know, because I haven't received a copy of Bhagavad Gita as it is yet, most likely, right? That's our work. So there are various ways that people uh, have an impetus to worship God or to hate him and then Krishna comes very specifically to show his 
pastimes, his personal pastimes, and uh, Bhagavad, which verse am I going to quote now? Watch this. Okay, take the mic. They're asking for the mic back there. Anugrahaya bhakta nam manusham deha mastita bhajate tadashi krida yaha shrutva tat parobhavit. And how did you know I was going to quote that verse? We because I do it every appearance day, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you give a little something on the verse? Anugrahaya means mercy. Anugraha. You know about grahas if you study astrology a little bit. Not that I'm saying you should, but I'm just, a graha is a grabber. There are forces in nature, like uh, Ketu will, mm, mm, they pull you along different ways. And so Anu Graha means someone who pulls you in the right direction. Anu means to follow, they make you follow them. Uh, you come with me. Anu Grahaya Bhaktanam Manusham Deham Astita. So Manusha means a human form. Manusha, Manu father of, of uh, humankind. So there's a way in which uh, Krishna, he comes and shows himself as a being that we can understand. Uh, two legs, two arms, face, and so forth. And he's very beautiful. And he also does stuff. So, Anugrahaya Bhaktana Manusham Deham Astita Bhajate Tadrishi Krita Yashutva Tatparobhavet. And the Bhagavatam, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, says, then you don't have to actually be there at the time, although it's nice if you could land during the appearance of, of one of the avatars of the Lord. It's equally, equally all stress with the underlying beneficial to hear about it afterwards. Why? Because it's absolute. You can chant the name, you can see the deity's form. Same. No difference. You can also hear about the avatar who appeared in the world and you get the same benefit because there's no difference. Therefore, Bhagavatam also gives this progression in purifying one's consciousness. It starts with shravanam, hearing about Krishna. Ya shutva tatparo bhavet. You become purified just by shutva, by hearing about the Lord and his, and his pastimes that he's performed. And uh, because it's Ram Navami, and I'm almost out of time because it's such a short class tonight, that um, let I want to talk about a, a few points in the Ramayan that um, I find to have important lessons. I know it's a common thing to do. Lots of people are doing it. They're all over the internet. But uh, I'm going to give a verse for each one and also a tune if Anapayani comes back, then I'll si sing the tune. So the first one is from a pastime in the Ramayan that takes place. And tonight, again, because this is a short class, I'm going to assume everybody knows a little bit about Ram's pastimes. If you don't, he was a prince. He was about to become crowned king, and then his father banished him to the forest, which is a big deal. And his wife, Sita, went with him, and so did his brother, Lakshmana, and they stayed there for 14 years. So why did he do that? Because he had given uh, two promises to his wife uh, many years before when she had saved him on the battlefield. And then she was happy about him becoming a crowned king, which was going to happen the next day. His father, Dasarath, was handing over the kingdom to, to him. He thought it was time. But then the servant in the palace had start to, started to speak to Kaikei, who was the wife, one of the wives of Dasarath. And she was envious because she thought she was going to lose her status that if Ram is crowned then Kaikei's son was Bharat 
and she felt that she would lose out. That is, the maidservant in the house thought she'd lose out, and she started to put that idea within the head of Kaikei, who loved Ram, but then she changed her mind. You see that. It happens sometimes. If you get bad association, in fact, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jangunan karanam gunasangosya sarasadyoni janmasu. Whoever you hang out with, you're going to become. You'll start taking up the same habits and think the same way they do. Therefore, when Lord Chaitanya was asked, how do you make advancement in devotional service? Or actually more accurately, he was asked, what's a, what's a devotee? What's a Vaishnav? And he said, asa sangha tyag e Vaishnavachar, that a devotee is someone who's very careful about his or her association because whomever you associate with, you become like. And if you associate with asa, which means somebody for instance, who doesn't believe in God, they're asat, then you'll start to feel like that also. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to talk about the, the general story of the Ramayana, but there it is. And what happened was the night before Ram was to be crowned as the next king, which everybody wanted because Ram from his very birth was celebrated in Ayodhya, this is his father's kingdom, and everyone was anticipating the time when Ramachandra would be the king. You know, in those days, and in the time of, of pious monarchies, where there is a person who is highly qualified to be a ruler, we didn't have, there were no elections per se. Do you all like the election cycle? Are you enjoying it? It, it becomes uh, tedious at best, and uh, becomes torturous at worst. And uh, then, uh, of course, you get the idea of people uh, trying to uh, position themselves so they can take power. And once they get power, there's sociologically, there's these laws from a sociologist called Michel, that, Michel's Iron Laws of Oligarchy, that once people get control, then they want to just keep it. And they forget about doing good for people, they just want to hold power. That's a sociological um, theory that has held for many, many years and has many nuances, but it's interesting. And it, you can see that it happens. So in these pious monarchies where there was a very high, highly qualified king uh, who would uh, then uh, try to take care of everybody in the best possible way and make sure that their spiritual vibration was the most prominent in the kingdom and so forth and that everyone had some something to do uh, gainful to do that was also connected to god uh, those are the best of circumstances and people were very happy and they were very happy to welcome a king there wasn't a lot of controversy about it also another point about these monarchies from the vedic time is it wasn't that it wasn't like a dictatorship or despots who then kill everybody who don't agree with them. Because you'll find even in the Srimad Bhagavatam, eh, yeah, like Stalin killed millions of his own people. There's Pol Pot. And throughout history, there have been despots that were uh, torturous and uh, murderous. And they killed so many people just because they wanted to keep their power. And whatever they, if anybody disagreed, then they just exterminate them. Well, these monarchs weren't like that. You'll find in the Krishna book, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, that Ugrasena, when he was a monarch, and there, were, there was a brahmana who was complaining that his sons had been disappearing after they were born, he publicly demonstrated against the king and said, how could this be happening in such a place? And uh, Prabhupada points out that he didn't get killed. Uh, he was, people were um, welcome to criticize uh, the monarch, but generally it doesn't happen so much in a, in a monarchy where there's a very pious king. So everyone wanted Ram, and then at the last minute, if you can imagine, he was asked to leave and go to the forest. So this a poignant scene when he goes and tells his mother, I'm not going to be crowned king. He's already uh, starting to shed his royal garments and uh, get ready for the forest. He tells his wife, I'm going, and she said, well, I'm going with you. 
And he said, no, 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 you don't understand the forest. There's animals there. <laughs> you know, we're going to sleep on the ground. Say, I don't care. I'm going with you. And his brother, the same thing. Uh, especially Lakshmana was his closest brother. And in, in the ontology of the appearance of God, there are various uh, expansions. And the first expansion of Krishna is Balaram. And the first expansion of Ramachandra is Lakshmana, who's the same as Balaram. And as a matter of fact, just a side point that you could take to the office tomorrow and discuss over the water cooler, is that in this Leela of the Lord, Lakshmana is the, the younger brother. And he didn't like the way things went down in the Ramayana at all. You know, the getting pushed to the forest, he said, in fact, when he found out that Ram was going to the forest, he said, forget it. Stay here and fight. We'll, we'll just annihilate everybody, and you're going to be the king. And Ram said, no, I'm not going to do that. He was aggravatingly honest and followed his father. In fact, it's mentioned in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam 11 Canto, talking about Ramachandra. Uh, now, which verse am I thinking? Pandits? Tekvasudusya jasarepshita raja lakshmin. Dharmishta Arya Vajasa Yaragara Ranyam Mayam Ragam Daita Yipsita Mandavad Vande Mahapurusha Te Charanaravindam. So uh, Ramchandra is mentioned here, Chekva Sudharma Chandra Chekva Sudusya Jasarepsi Charaja Lakshmi. He had everything. He had his wife is the goddess of fortune, Sitaram. Sitaram, Sitaram Jai Sitaram. Sita is same as goddess of fortune and Ramchandra is the same as Narayan. So he had the kingdom, he had the goddess of fortune, but he gave it all up. Why? Dharmishta Arya. Because his father, Dasarath, said, go to the forest. I mean, who does that? Most people, they say, you're done, you're too old, uh, you're finished, whatever it is. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to give up their spot. But he didn't even mind. Ram Chandra, when, it, when his father told him, and it was under duress too, because his wife called in these boons from before and said, uh, now I want them. He said, well, what are they? I'll give you anything. He said, send Ram to the forest, uh, 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 install Bharat, my son, as the king, and you send Ram Chandra to the forest, 14 years in. You're kidding, right? And then when he gradually saw she wasn't kidding. There was something evil that had entered into her mind to, to carry this out. He became so despondent, depressed and then despondent, disconsolate. And nonetheless, because there was this sense of dharma, and you'll find it throughout the Bhagavatam, Bali Maharaj, for instance, uh, when he said to little Vamandev, who appeared to trick him, because he wanted to take back the kingdom of heaven f um, from Bali, who had usurped it. I know I'm giving a lot of, there's background that needs to be put behind all of these. But just <clears throat> for those who know the story of Bali, he was a king. He offered some charity to a little brahmachari, cutest incarnation of the Lord, as according to the Lago Bhagavatam Rita. <laughs> His little brahmachari has a little deer skin on, a little water pot. And he said, only wants three paces of land. And he's like, that's all? Come on. <laughs> I'm the king. I can give you anything. Ask for three planets. I'll give you that. And he said, nope, just three paces of land. If I want more than that, I'll get greedy. And who knows what will happen then. So he said, three paces. And then the spiritual master of Bali said, it's a trick. That's Vishnu. He's going to take everything. He said, I already promised. Nobody in my family has ever taken back a promise. Besides that, if it is Vishnu, I should give it to him and so forth. So there, there is this mood throughout the, 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 the stories of the, the Ramayan, the Mahabharata, and so forth, of Dharma, that actually truth matters in what you say. If you can't go back on your word. And Dasarath already gave his word to his wife. And so now she said, I want these two things. So he is barely able to bring himself to say it to his son, but Kaike told, this is what he wants from you. And somehow or other, he was able to communicate that he concurred. And then Ramchandra said, I'll do it. Fine. That's what you want. I'm going. It wasn't passive aggressive either. He just took it as duty and, you know, I'm going. 
He said, my, my only regret is that you couldn't tell me yourself that Kaike had to tell me because I'll do whatever you say, Father, whatever you say. That's one of the uh, lessons that comes from the Ramayana about being dutiful. I mean, we can always cut a corner and say, uh, that doesn't seem like the best for me now to follow the order of Krishna. I'd rather do my own thing. But in the end, it always turns out better to follow Krishna's instruction rather than what we think is good for us at the time because it all comes out in the wash, as they say. So Ramchandra went to say goodbye. He was leaving the next day. And I hope I built it up enough so that you could understand the citizens of Ayodhya were shocked when they heard he was leaving. Why? What could have been the reason and so forth? I mean, it was mass confusion, what to speak of, that they just, uh, their hearts were broken. And when Ram, Sita, and Lakshman then were headed out of Ayodhya on chariot, the people were, they all said, well, if you're going, we'll just go with you. We'll have Ayodhya somewhere else. Wherever you go to the forest, we'll just be there. And then, of course, Kaikei was, objecting to everything no no that's not the plan he has to go by himself <laughs> she is being very um litigious and of course ram chandra wanted to follow the the heart of uh, the very meaning of of what his father had asked him to do so he finally had to leave in the middle of the night when they got to the edge of the city to leave the citizens behind so they couldn't follow him it's a heart-rending part of the story. And along the way, as Ram's leaving, there is a, a short section in the Ramayana that talks about Kevat, who is a boatman. And he had been an employee of Guha. Guha was an, a friend of the family, friend of Dasarath, a well-known kind of warrior of the forest who they met on their way out of town. And Guha was taking care of them at the edge of the forest and after they had left the city. And Ram had communicated that he needed to cross the river and go onward to the Chitrakut Mountain where he would stay for some time in his leela. And Guha called for one of his boatmen named Kevat, who came and uh, accommodated Sita, Ram, and Lakshman in the boat as they were clandestinely leaving the town and leaving all the, their followers behind. And so he took them across the, the river, the Sarayu, and they got to the other side, which was no easy task. They were going some ways. It was laborious. And then Sita took off her ring, and she handed it to her husband, Ramchandra, with the indication that uh, you give this to Kavit, we, gotta, we, have, we should give some payment. And Kavit said, no, no, that's not proper because we're in the same profession, he said to Ram. And Ram said, same profession? I'm a, you know, a, a prince, albeit an exiled prince, but still, uh, you're a boatman. Where's the connection? <laughs> Because in the Vedic culture, there's a system. If you're a barber and you go to another barber, they don't charge. If you're a lawyer, you go to another lawyer, no charge. Same profession. That's the idea Kavit was putting. And so he said, how could we be the same? And Kavit said, you took, I took you across the Saraya River. Now when I leave this world, which could be any time, so I'm going to be depending on you to deliver me across the ocean of material birth and death. So there's a beautiful verse that's from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam's second chapter, which is the demigods who were praying to Lord Krishna, they knew he was in the womb already of Devaki, so they came down to offer their prayers, get in on the ground floor. The first ones, Hare Krishna. And they're offering these prayers to the Lord within the womb, and they, they give this prayer 
that it's Twayambu Jaksha Kila Satvadami Samadhi na Vesha Chaita Saike Twat Pada Potena Mahat Kritena Kurvanti Govatsa Padam Bhavabdim. So you'll see this Bhava, that last word in this verse. Bhava, Bhava means the ocean of the material world. Bhava really means that it's always changing. It's never one thing. This is an observation that Krishna makes that this, he's Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, the, the people who know this stuff, this is what they say, nasato vitite bhavo, nabhavo vitite sata, ubariyar apidrishnon tas twaniyos tatvadarshibi. The tatvadarshis, those who actually have clear vision, they see that this world is made up of that which is changing, therefore it's called illusory. It's not false, but it's just illusory because it's here today, gone tomorrow. You can't ever grab it, you can't hold it. And he said, then there's the permanent, which, which is reality. There's sat and asat. And so bhava means the material world is always changing and abdim means the ocean. So this whole material world is like an, a big ocean of currents that are always changing and we can never count on them because they'll change into something else but this uh, the, in this verse the demigods say kurvanti govatsa padam vavabdim you can cross this ocean by the mercy of mahat which means krishna ramchandra they come here specifically to give us the means by which we can cross the ocean and mahat also means those who follow krishna and those who follow ramchandra so if you meet the Mahat, you meet Krishna like Arjuna met Krishna and said, I surrender to you. Tell me what to do, how to cross this, uh, this ocean of indecision I'm in now and also the, the birth and death. And if you find uh, a person who's heard from Krishna or heard, has heard from a person who's heard from Krishna and it comes through as we call disciplic succession, this is also you're talking or listening to the Mahat who's giving you what they heard. And so what it says, Twatpada Potena Mahat Kritena, this is a boat that this instruction that you get from these, from Krishna or Krishna's devotees, by which you can cross the Bhava Abdim. But it's so potent, the process of following the instruction, that have you ever had this moment where you got in touch with your sincerity? Have you ever had that? where you're praying to God and you're saying, this time I really mean it. <laughs> and you just, it's about, I really do, I really want this, I don't want anything else but Krishna. Have you ever had that moment? Say yes. Yeah, yeah if not, try for it. If, if you sincerely approach the Mahat, Kritena, and the Kritena means the Mahat, they don't just give you a philosophy, they give you access to it. it. means you follow like this. If you do these steps, then you can easily uh, attain perfection. And so, what does that do for us? Kurvanti govatsa padam babadim. So this is poetical and it says govatsa padam. So what's a go? And what's a govatsa? A little calf. A govatsa means a little calf. So vatsa means, you know, like it's a it's dear to a cow it's a little calf and padam means a hoof print it means you know a footstep so imagine a little calf can you imagine anything more cute than a little calf big ear floppy ears and it's got little hooves say no i can't imagine anything more cute than that by shake a dust and then imagine there's a little muddy field and the, the little calf steps in there and then the rainwater gets in and there's this much water this is how poetical the Bhagavatam is. There's this much water. That's a calf's hoof print right there. And then now that ocean, Bhava Abdim, has sh shrunken to the size of Govatsa Padam. And now you can easily step over it. Kurvandi Govatsa Padam Bhava Abdim, because now you have the process given to you by the Mahat. So the crossing over of the material ocean is possible by the mercy of Krishna, as we hear from Kevat, who in a, in a very uh, heartwarming way had spoken to the Lord and said that I'm just waiting for your mercy. This is the process that uh, the devotees take up. 
So I was singing this verse, and let's see, I had three tunes. One tune was. Uh, What are the main tunes we do? No, no, it's one of the ragas to sing this to. Anyway, let's just pick one because I think I know the other two. So we'll sing this to maybe a um, Hamsadwani. We'll try that. Toyam Bujaksha Kila Nani Adina Veshitate to Saike. Let's do Hare Krishna one time so we get it again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare I'm calling an audible. We're not going to chant it to this because I'm running out of time. Just remember the raga and remember the sweetness of Kevat's pastime and put it to the raga yourself. You can do that. And the next is a, a verse that was indicative of how available Krishna's mercy is. This is a verse from the Ramayan, and it's quoted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he's teaching Sanatana Goswami the path of devotional service, he gives this verse, and it goes, Sakrid Eva Prapanoyas. Please repeat. Tavasmiti Chayachite. Abayam Sarvada Tasmai. Dadam yetat vritam mama. And go to the next one for the translation, please. He says, It is my vow that if one only once seriously surrenders unto me, saying, My dear Lord, from this day I am yours, and prays to me for courage, I shall immediately award courage to that person, and he will always remain safe from that time on. For those of you who are keeping score, it's from the Yudhikanda of the Ramayana at 18.33. And it was spoken by Lord Ramachandra in relationship to Bibishana, who is the brother of Ravan. And he left Ravan. He was trying to turn him around, but Ravana was determined to destroy himself because he was demoniac in heart. He had stolen Sita. So Bibishan leaves and he goes to join Ramchandra. That's a big deal. Leave your family members and leave the king and just say, I'm switching side. It takes a lot of heart to do that. So we went there. You know, in the heat of battle, there's a war going on between Ram's side and Ra Ravana's side. And it's hard to tell when you're in the heat of battle, who's your friend and who's your enemy. And it's really hard also to tell in this world sometimes who's actually sincere and who's got a good motivation and who doesn't, isn't it? In fact, it's even hard to tell who's a devotee and who's not. In some cases, it's one of the reasons that there are various verifiable ways that you can tell if you're a devotee or if others are devotees too. And that's another class because I just got a note and I've got a feeling I'm going to be stopping soon. Oh, can you move forward? <laughs> I dodged a bullet. Please move forward by 7.2 inches. I predicted it earlier. Now it's come true. So, this is a Let's sing this one to the um, Shiva, Shiva Ranjani, the second part of Shiva Ranjani. Sakri. Mm -hmm. 
and go back to the Sanskrit. We'll sing it together. And then sing this from your heart. We'll put it a little bit in the upper part of the scale so you can really open up your lungs and your vocal cords. And take it as a prayer and remembrance that if you just sacred once only, ask Krishna for shelter, then he says, okay, you're in. And even if you change your mind, he'll still drag you. Is that okay? Say yes. yes. Yeah. And sometimes it means really hard to get away from the material world and you think, how will I ever get out of here? Try to make one sincere prayer and then Krishna will drag you. Of course, there's the easy way and the hard way. If you make it easy for Krishna, it's much nicer on everybody. Sa, 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 kriva prapanoyas tavasmiti chayachate abayam sarvadatas mai dadam yetat ratam mama. And then the third verse I wanted to present today was the general pastime of Ramchandra and Ravana could it be a clearer contrast of good against evil and that's one of the beautiful parts of the story is Ravana is so demonstratively evil in the sense that he only cares about his own sense gratification and his own power whereas Ramchandra as we've described earlier is completely dharmic and completely good in all ways and we'll find this dichotomy in the world that we're in now good evil light dark it's there and the bhagavad gita the ramayan the Srimad bhagavatam are encouraging us to go to the light stay in the light so one may say well how do i do that by practicing the system of bhakti yoga there are five main practices one is to chant Hare krishna What's the first one? Yeah, you got to work with me. Okay, second one is to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. If you don't have a Srimad Bhagavatam, see me afterwards. Third one is to worship the deity. You have to have a deity to worship, otherwise it's hard to develop that intense love unless you can see the Lord, serve Him, bring Him things and so forth. To live in the Holy Dham. You have to live in a sacred place. You got to be there to believe it. In a place, like this is a holy place. You have to be here to feel it. You have to feel it for yourself. Much of what we know is not something intellectualized. It's something that we just know. It's like, do you know that you're alive? Say yes. How do you know? You just know. And so when you see Krishna and you're able to worship the deity, of course, there is a philosophy behind it. It's not willy-nilly. And we can hear that also. But when you see Krishna, how beautiful he is, you'll just, your heart will open. And that's important because if your heart's not open to Shishi Radha Manan Mohan, then it's by default open to the so called love of the material world, which is bhava. It's always changing. And every country song, every blues song, most songs and poems in the world that were ever written are about love gained and then lost. And then number five is associate with devotees because when you associate with devotees then you'll become devotee-like and then you'll actually become a devotee and that's a day to celebrate when you have no other business except to worship Krishna and Krishna says ananya chintayantamam yejana paripasate tesham nityab yuktanam yoga kshemam vahamyaham if you turn your attention fully to me and just concentrate on how to serve me rather than try to serve yourself then he says vaham yaham I'll personally take care of you and I know people that have been practicing devotional service for 55 years and have never had a bank account or a job and they're doing better than anybody else I've ever seen in the world even people I know I've visited even recently who have the nicest homes and cars and everything else you can possibly get in the world and still they're rife RFE with anxieties and they're always working hard to get another few million because I mean 
500 million is just not enough these days, is it? Okay, so this is the last one. And th the three lessons that, or meditations, I'll call them. Lessons is, sounds too trite. But the first one was the meditation of crossing over the material world by the mercy of the Lord. And if you do a little service, then you can ask the Lord a favor. Can you bring me across? There's more to say about that. The second lesson was Sakradeva Prapano, yes. If just make the declaration, wherever you have to go, go to Mori Point, walk up and say it to the ocean, say, Krishna, I surrender to you. But just say it over and over again, and chanting Hare Krishna is that kind of surrender. And then third one, Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hai Andakar, means very simple equation. This is algebra. This is where algebra comes from, this verse. Don't put that in your SAT, but... Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andakara. It's a simple equation. It means Krishna is light, Maya is darkness. Where there's Krishna, there's light, and where there's a, a Maya, there's darkness. So once you have Krishna, then the darkness goes away. Simple formula. If you ever want to know why you're bummed out about anything, it's because you're not thinking of Krishna. So just uh, Krishna Surya Sama. We'll do the same tune, and then we'll finish. Krishna Surya Sama My High Andakar Jahan Krishna Tahanahi Maya Adhikar It's all the lessons you're going to get out of me today because I'm out of time. I'd like to talk more because there's so many more things to say, but it's a Tuesday appearance day today, so we just got enough to wet our beaks. You have a little beak, you just get a little drop. And now we're going to have a special offering, and it is uh, going to require a orga an organized effort on our part. We're all going to stand up, and we'll make a little semicircle around Srila Prabhupada's Vyasasana, and then we're going to have offerings what we have to offer tonight is the results from our distribution of literature all over Silicon Valley and beyond, and also from our Bhakti community, which is uh, designed specifically to give a safe space for new people to come and cultivate Bhakti in an environment that is encouraging. So when I count down from three, we'll just pick up all the asanas, we'll put them back in that big bin over there and then we'll clear the floor roll up the rug and we'll make a semicircle and over the next 12 and a half minutes we're going to make the offering then we're going to turn this way and have our teak three two one Hare Krishna thank you everyone thank you so much Sri Ramachandra Ki Jai Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai
Howdy. Okay, now we're going to count down again. We'll make a make a an opening from Prabhupada to the altar. So just a little aisle open here. And if you can hear me, raise your hand. If you can hear me, raise your hand. If you can hear me, say shh. Okay, let's try it again. If you can hear me, raise your hand. If you can hear me, say shh. Although the deities are open, we're putting our attention to Srila Prabhupada because we're making an offering to him. As Prabhupada mentions in the Nectar of the Devotion, in all the temples, the accounts are regularly read to the deities. We offer ours to Srila Prabhupada based on Sakshad Dari Tvimastamasta Shastrer, Ruktastata Bhavyatta Eva Sadbi. We offer to Prabhupada who offers it on our behalf to Krishna. And we're going to hear from the Sankirtan book distribution and from the Bhakti community. Let's start with Bhakti community. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept our most humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet. All glories to your divine grace. We are gathered here to offer the results of our 2024 Rama Naomi Manti Sankirtan Festival titled MSF of Service in the Mood of Hanuman from Srimad Bhagavatam 9.10.51 translation. Lord Ramachandra became king during Treta Yuga, but because of his good government, the age was like Satyugya. Everyone was religious and completely happy. Purport. If people take to the Sankirtan a moment of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, they will certainly be freed from the contamination of Kali Yuga, and the people of this age will be happy, as people were in Satya Yuga, the golden age. Anyone, anywhere can easily take to this Hare Krishna movement, but need only chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, observe the rules and regulation, and stay free from the contamination of sinful life. Even if one is sinful and cannot give up sinful life immediately, if he chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra with devotion and faith, he will certainly be freed from all sinful activities and his life will be successful. Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. This is the blessings of Lord Ramachandra, who has appeared in this age of Kali as Lord Gaurasundra. The Bhakti community is a community of spiritual seekers who are interested in learning about the timeless wisdom and practices of Bhakti Yoga, the yoga of love and gratitude. With blessings of His Grace Vaishishikamar Prabhu and Her Grace Nirakula Mataji, the Bhakti community continued to inspire newcomers to pursue Bhakti through various weekly programs. This MSF, Bhakti on program continued the series titled Lessons from the Golden Monk. The topics discussed included Become an Ambassador of Goodwill, The Power of Association, and Gratitude is the Key to Avoid Envy. Around 25 people attended the program every week. On Thursdays, we continued the second batch of Bhakti Circle Level 2 program. The topics discussed were the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, does the, does the Divine Have a Form? Around 15 people attended the program every week. Next stop, the Mantra Zone. The in-person meetup continued to provide a safe space for newcomers to experience the bliss of mantra meditation, introductory bhakti discussions, and prasadam. Around 25 people in Palo Alto, and around 12 people in San Jose attended the weekly meetup program. On Sundays, the Women's Circle program continued every week discussing Bhagavad Gita, focusing on the devotional service. Around 10 women attended these programs weekly. Comunidad Bhakti, the Bhakti community for Spanish-speaking people, continued to conduct Bhakti classes for the newcomers. The programs included Japa Circle, Bhakti Circle, and Bhagavad Gita reading. The sessions were attended by around 30 people every week. Bhakti Community Seattle continued to conduct Bhakti Circle and Meditation Mondays program every week. It was attended by around 10 people. Bhakti Community's sole purpose is to associate newcomers with Vaishnavas so that newcomers can progress in Bhakti Yoga. Vaishnava Sangalava or VSL is a metric that measures how many times a newcomer comes in association with a Vaishnava through a devotional service class. For this MSF, Bhakti Community Seattle achieved 300 Vaishnava Sangha lovers. 
around 10 newcomers attended these programs at Bhakti Community Seattle. And for this MSF, Kaminidad Bhakti's goal was to achieve 315 Vaishnava Sangha Lovas. We are happy to report that Kaminidad Bhakti achieved the goal and has achieved and surpassed the goal with 960 Vaishnava Sangha Lovas. For this MSF, Bhakti Community Silicon Valley's goal was to achieve 225 Vaishnava Sangha Lovas. We are happy to report that Bhakti Community Silicon Valley achieved the goal with 700 Vaishnava Sangha Lovas. Around 55 newcomers attended the Bhakti Community program this MSF for Silicon Valley. We are eternally indebted to all the volunteers, room leaders, speakers, mentors and book distributors who work tirelessly every day to fulfill Srila Prabhupada's mission and spread Krishna consciousness in the Western world. We also want to thank our donors because of which we are able to maintain Bhakti community. We seek blessing from you Srila Prabhupada and all your disciples and Vaishnavas to bless Bhakti community so that we can attempt to follow Lord Chaitanya's instruction to inspire newcomers to take up the path of Bhakti if Lord Krishna so desires. And finally, our most heartfelt gratitude to His Grace Vaishishka Prabhu and Her Grace Sri Lakula Mataji. Because of your presence, leadership and motivation, Bhakti community exists and is thriving. <laughs> Bhakti community gets the opportunity to serve newcomers due to the tireless efforts of the book distribution team who introduced Bhakti community to Hinduist newcomers. Now His Grace Shri Krishna Purushottam Prabhu will present the book distribution results. Dear Srila Prabhupada, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to you. Team ISV set the following goals for this MSF of the service in the mood of Hanuman. The goals of this MSF are to perform a drama on the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, to distribute at least 25 Srimad Bhagavatam sets by Sri Ramanavami to discuss the glories of Ayodhya Dham with at least two people. Devotees covered various locations to distribute books for this MSF spanning about three weeks describing the glories of Ayodhya Dham. The MSF also marks the beginning of Badra Purnima Marathon leading up to Badra Purnima. Highlights of this MSF are the Kids Sankirtan team also went door to door in many areas like Fremont and Warm Springs. In total, they distributed 25 Srimad Bhagavatam sets, 3 Chaitanya Charitamrita sets, and also they collected 3,112 in Lakshmi points. <laughs> the Western Sankirtan team started this MSF with traveling Sankirtan going far and beyond the Bay Area to spread the mercy of Lord Nityananda and Sriman Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Two teams are currently traveling and distributing Srila Prabhupada books to colleges on weekends. They visited St. Patrick Parade Ray, San Francisco State University, Foothill College, Modesto Junior College, DMV Santa Clara, a list of universities in Oregon and Seattle area. Body, Mind and Spirit Expo, Sacramento, local downtowns, farmers markets and shops. In total, they distributed six Srimad Bhagavatam sets, 33 Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita sets, occurred 4,675 book points, collected 16,247 in Lakshmi points. <laughs> Team Motel Gita attended annual Ahova trade show and had an overwhelming positive response from the hotel, motel and hotel owners. Many hotel and motel owners st stopped by the praised the work of in the in the reference of Motel Gita. They are very happy with our work, and many directors complimented our work. They gave us a wonderful corner booth close to the food stall, ensuring our presence in high traffic area. We met and interacted with hundreds of hotel owners. We received 5,000 plus Gitas. In addition, 123 Gitas and 50 assorted books were sold. We received a donation of 
2,500. Overall, 3,000 Bhagavad Gita's were distributed to hotels and motels all across the United States of America. By the mercy of Lord Ramachandra, we are very happy to report that all the goals have been successfully met, surpassed and smashed. <laughs> For the pleasure of Lord Ramachandra, we will perform Rama and Drama on April 27th. With respect to books, in all, more than 50 devotees participated in book distribution. <laughs> Total ISV accrued 12,616 in book points for this MSF, which includes 39 Srimad Bhagavatam sets and 36 Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita sets. <laughs> Team ISV collected total of 23,195 and 2 cents in Lakshmi points. We thank all devotees who enthusiastically participated in the mood of Hanuman. We express our deepest gratitude to His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu and Her Grace Nirukula Mataji and all Srila Prabhupada disciples for encouraging Team ISV. MSF of service in the mood of Hanuman ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan ki Shri Man Mahaprabhu ki Shri Shri Lakshmi Narsingh Dev Bhagavan ki Shri La Prabhupad ki Gaur Premanand Hari Hari I'd like to offer a special recognition for Jai Madhava Prabhu, Pavani Bhakti and her team and Shredder Devi Dasi and her team, Malini Devi Dasi and Sri Krishna Purushottam and their team leaders for taking up the work of the Sankirtan movement and expanding it by take, taking care of new people who come forward and meeting as many new people as possible to give them transcendental literature. Thank you very much for your service. Hare Krishna. And now we'll turn our attention to Shishi Radha Madan Mohan and conduct the evening Arctic. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine All you. It's all you. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Purkarne Shukyavadi Pashchata Deshukarne Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shriya Chaitanya Radhara Shivasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ha 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama
His divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur ki. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur ki. Prem se kaho, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath, Shamakun Radhakun Giri Govardhan ki. Shri Mathura Vrindavan Dham ki. Shri Navadvi Mayapur Dham ki. Shri Jagannath Puri Dham ki. Ganga Mai Jamuna Mai ki. Bhakti Devi Tulsi Maharani ki. Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vrinda ki. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Namaste Nara Shringhaya Namaste Nara Shringhaya Namaste Nara Shringhaya Namaste Nara Shringhaya Yeah, I'm not 
Ram Ram. Hare Krishna. How is everyone? Good. Good. Wonderful. So first of all, what did you notice the most wonderful evening here? What did you notice today? Yes, the altar has an arrow. That's a 
Hari Sankirtan Prabhu doesn't just clean the temple, he is creative mind also. He and Haldar Rupa Prabhu, they put up the arrow uh, along with uh, Brajavilasini and Kalakeli. And actually that design, you believe it or not, you, Braja and Kala have been empowering um, uh, Shilpa Mataji and I believe Sita Sundari, is it? Sita Rani. And they have actually come up with this beautiful design. So if you see them, please... Let them know that you love the altar decoration. It takes hours till midnight, right? Okay, and then also the temple hall decoration is led by Kalakeli and her team. The vases were led by Kushi Mataji and her team. Um, altar decoration with the Charuni Mai Prabhu and uh, under the guidance of the Krishangi and Bhagyashri, they have been working on it. So it's a, such a beautiful decoration. Isn't it so lovely to walk into the, such a fresh flowers, right? Yes, okay, wonderful. And what was another best thing you noticed today evening? Yes, we have Vaisheshika Prabhu and Mother Nirakula, they're back at ISV. Haribo! <laughs> Great. So let's go into the sponsors. We have actually on the occasion of Ram Naomi. We have Tarun Prabhu and Preeti Mataji. They are sponsoring the occasion of the Murli Dar's arrival. I guess we have to do a little more tapasya to see Murli Dar. And Shamalangi Mataji and Radhi Kripa Prabhu are sponsoring on the occasion of Anna Pine's birthday. And Radha Kripa's birthday is also today. They don't do anything in one digit. They do everything in double digit. <laughs> okay. We also have a Vishaka Lila's birthday. Is Vishaka here? I, she promised me she will come to temple. Okay. So we, are, we please see Vishaka Lila and encourage her to come every weekend, okay? <laughs> Tell her you love us more than your business. Okay, the next we have is Sri Gopal Prabhu and Kameshwari are also sponsoring. They didn't tell me the occasion. Sri Gopal Prabhu, do you want to tell me the occasion? Yeah, Kameshwari has a really, really, you know, strong at attachment to the Lord Ram. I think she, that's her Easter Devta. So, um, you know, she has dressed the deities along with Ramananda Sakha Prabhu. She cooked the malu today. So she's been here. She was... Literally put, I'm not kidding, eight hours to took out the jewelry before she offered to the lordships today. So that's uh, that kind of devotion I even aspire from her. She, I mean, I don't have the patience like her, but <laughs> hopefully someday. <laughs> and I think I saw in ISV Journal there is someone's anniversary today too, is it? Is that right? Malini and Shiva. Since we are in the celebration, we celebrate everything. Do you have anything you want to share? <laughs> Bhagwat's birthday is also today? Okay. I think your friends are making fun of you. They want a f free feast, I guess. Okay. So, since we have thanked everyone, please stay back a little bit, half an hour, 30 minutes, 21 minutes, whatever you can. Help out in the kitchen, help out in the parking lot, help out clean up the temple hall. But everything that you do, it makes a huge difference. It goes long ways. So please promise me you will honor the prasadam very relishly and then you're going to help out a little bit, okay? Are you, are, you, are you okay with that? Please raise your hand who is going to help out with cleanup. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much from the bottom of her heart. You would like to sponsor the Sunday feast? For the Garland team, to honor the Garland team. Suesh Prabhu and Mansi Mataji are the sponsoring the feast. See, actually, this is so wonderful. It's so spontaneous and wonderful. In order for us to put festival together, to bring these flowers and bring the expensive boga, it takes a lot of effort. So anything you can help out, we are happy to use it in your service. Okay, so if you want to see any sponsorship, Surya Kun Prabhu is out there. Sri Gopal Prabhu, please raise your hand. You can talk to him. Priya Kishori is in-house as well. 
So yes, please see her, and then we'll be happy to guide you through if you need anything. Cal. Is there anything as an ISV we can do for you? Do you need anything? Anyone ne wants to talk or needs books or want to help with the service? Please don't be shy to talk to us. We are here for you in your service. Hare Krishna. And I will have Rohini let us know what is uh, cooking in the kitchen. And actually, she heads up uh, the back end stuff, talking to all the cooks, getting all the groceries, what to chop, what not to chop. Hare Krishna. So we had many, many cooks who made this wonderful feast tonight. Um, starting off with green rice and kheer made by Hansa Priya Mataji. <laughs> Uh, next is veg pahari made by Radhaball of Pramu. <laughs> Carrot halwa and dam alu made by Kameshwari Mataji. <laughs> and daivara made by Kamala Sri Mataji and Pavani Bhakti Mataji. <laughs> and Shamalangi Mataji's team made lots of parathas. <laughs> and the rest of the cooks who have helped are Nilamani Krishna Pramu. Ananda Vrindavan Mataji and Ram Rati Pramo. Hare Krishna. With that, we thank our broadcast team who brings all this wonderful nectar to the global, to globally, to everyone. And also our head Pujari, Ramananda Sakaprabhu, who heads up the broadcast as well as the DT worship. Thank you very much. And with this, we'll go into the Prashadam prayer led by Anapayani on her path. Sharira Vidya Jha Jodendriya Taheka Please come take Prashadam. Hare Krishna.